All right, here's my question today. And uh, this one's a fun one, I think. I guess we'll find out if it's fun or not. Uh, some of you guys, I have been, um, I make a lot of tweets about kind of the electoral college. And more broadly, I tweet a lot about how our system is so corrupt and it's not democratic at all via superdelegates, via the electoral college, via the DCCC, via gerrymandering, via voter suppression. The list goes on and on and on. And I find it interesting that these people crying about a foreign country hijacking our democracy, quote unquote, um, don't give a hoot about all the problems our pseudo-democracy has to begin with uh, that we can actually do something about. Uh, but man, you're really worried about a couple Twitter trolls in Russia. You guys know the drill there. I, I talk about that a lot. Now, getting to today's question, some people on this stream even, and other people on Twitter, are pro-electoral college. And so my question today, why? Uh, you know, I debate the electoral college sometimes with folks on social media. And I just straight up don't understand any of the arguments for it. I, I, I mean, I, I know what those arguments mean, but to me, they just make zero sense. And I've gotten some condescending ones. I mean, someone said to me, oh, in a political science 101 class, you learn about the Electoral College and what it does. Man, that's in poli sci 101, Ron. Bar, bar, bar. Yeah, and then you know what you do right after that? You have a debate over whether or not we should have the Electoral College. You know why? Because it's been a debate that's been going on for years because it's a valid debate to have because the verdict's still out over whether or not we should have this thing. I don't think we should because it was made in the first place to appease slave owners and it dilutes the whole idea of one person, one vote, which I think is way better. I've, and I've never heard any argument for the Electoral College. That sounds better than one person, one vote. People say, oh, well, without the Electoral College, New York and California would decide every presidential election. What does that mean exactly? Does that just mean the, the places with the most people, like whoever the majority votes for there, will probably win the election? I guess that's technically true. But again, how is that better than one person vote? And, and furthermore, how do you even know that based on the system we have in place? What do I mean by this? I'll tell you this. Let's use California as an example. I know a lot of Republicans in California that don't bother to vote in the presidential because they say, my vote doesn't matter. I live in a deep blue state. My vote doesn't matter. In the presidential, I don't even bother voting. And by the way, there are these attitudes all throughout the country. Similarly, there might be somebody in Wyoming thinks my vote for president doesn't matter. I live in a deep red state and I'm a progressive or I'm a Democrat, whatever. I don't bother voting in the presidential. There's a lot of people that fall into that category. That's why half the country stays home on election day. One of the many reasons, but a reason nonetheless on why half the country stays home. So why, I mean, do those people not have the right to feel like their vote for president matters? I, I mean, why should they? I would rather see that republic, even though I disagree with them 110% politically, I would rather see them go to the polls on election day knowing that their vote matters because it goes beyond what the majority of people in California do. It's the country as a whole, and you are one person with one vote. And that's how it's tallied. I'd much rather see that. So, and, and then other people, the argument for the Electoral College, oh, well, presidents won't campaign everywhere if we got away with the Electoral College. You mean like they campaign everywhere now? Go to Wisconsin and tell people that all the presidential candidates campaigned everywhere. Go tell them that in Wisconsin. See if they remember 2016. First of all. Second of all, is it really that big of a difference if a person is bullshitting you on TV versus bullshitting you in a crowded gymnasium? Who gives a shit? Honestly. And if it's that big of a deal to you that, hey, I live in a rural place and I really want an opportunity to see my presidential candidates, what kind of a sycophant are you? You really want to uh, 
other points. Oh, well, it'll just be the agenda of California and New York if we do away with the Electoral College. What kind of things do you think the president's really going to do in that case? Uh, we have these things called state rights and state governments. So, you know, guess what? If uh, California randomly decides we're cool with public masturbation and we're going to pass a law legalizing it, and uh, maybe Mississippi's like, oh, you know what? We're not down with public masturbation. Guess what? They don't have to have a law <laughs> being cool with public masturbation. And if there is a federal thing, which there wouldn't be, but if there would be in this bogus example, Mississippi could have a state law. <laughs> I mean, it's like, what do you think the president's going to do to serve the agenda of California and New York? And, and also, I can tell you guys this. I've lived in red states before. I've lived in Tennessee. And I can tell you, there are no states that would benefit more from federal progressive policies than the reddest and poorest states among us. Especially something like a single payer healthcare system, especially something like um, tuition free college. The reddest and poorest states among us would benefit most from something like that. Because, by the way, if we had a single payer system, eventually that would bleed into something like access to healthcare. So, places where there are not adequate medical resources near them because we have a profit based healthcare system, those problems would start being solved. So, I, I just don't understand any argument for the Electoral College. Unless if you're a Republican, if you're a right wing Republican and you say, I like the Electoral College because it benefits my interests, because usually if the Electoral College helps somebody win that didn't win the popular vote, it's a Republican. That's how it's been for the past 20, 30 years at least. Then, I mean, I guess I understand that argument. I think morally you're totally off base because you're basically saying my special interest is more important than your vote and more important than the will of the people. That's what you're saying. I guess, strategically and politically, you're right. If you're gonna say, hey, I'm right wing, the Electoral College helps me out, so I'm for it. All right, well, politically, I can't really argue with that. Morally, it's pretty repulsive, but okay. I can't argue with that. If you're a progressive and you're for the Electoral College, I am very confused by you. I, and I'm, I'm not trying, because I know there's some people that watch the stream that fall into that category, and I'm asking you, why? Like, explain it to me. It doesn't make any sense to me why you'd be for the Electoral College. Uh, and how is that better than one person, one vote? Why do you think somebody in Wyoming, their vote should count more than somebody in California's? Just because there's more people living in California. It makes zero sense to me. And you don't even know that the quote unquote will of California will be served because so many people don't vote anyway. And I think one of the reasons people don't vote is because maybe they're a progressive in a deep red state or they're a Republican in a blue state and they feel like their vote for president never matters. So they don't even bother voting. I'd rather live in a system where those people feel that their vote does matter because it's one person, one vote. All right. So let me see what you guys are saying to this. Joseph points out uh, California voters are worth one ninth of a Wyoming voter in federal election. I live in Tennessee. We need help big time. The short-sighted backwards thinking is drowning us. I used to live in Tennessee. Uh, I do think at the electoral level, that is very true. Uh, are rural and urban interests really different at this point? I don't think so. Not really. I mean, I'm sure there's some differences. The will of the people has no impact on policy, only the donors impact policy. That is also true. So let's see. I'm looking for, okay, here's one pro-electoral college. I am pro-electoral college, this is from Pat, I am pro-electoral college because it equalizes the differences between highly populated areas as opposed to rural areas. Again, how does that make sense? Like, like again, that, that makes no sense to me in the case of, first of all, when it comes to local levels and state levels, you still have your locality, you still have your state, A. B, how does that make any sense on, on a presidential standpoint? Why, how is that better than one person, one vote? And how do you know that everybody in a certain area has the same agenda? They don't. They don't. Just because somebody lives in Wyoming doesn't mean 
they want to vote for a Republican 100% of the time. Similarly, just because someone lives in New York doesn't mean they want to vote Democrat or for a progressive. They might be a Republican. So how does it equalize anything? It doesn't. It just convinces people to stay home. Like, again, and, and I've heard this talking point, but when you break it down, how does it make sense? Uh, the Electoral College is an abomination. I agree. Uh, if the Electoral College had any power, they would not have voted in 2000, 2004, or 2016. Hillary lost is enough reason for me. So you're for the Electoral College because a candidate that you don't like, a candidate that I didn't like either, lost. Okay, I, I mean, that's, I don't think that's the greatest reason in the world, but okay. <laughs> Uh, the Electoral College is bullshit. Rural states with less people have more power than New York and California. I'm from rural Nevada. That's BS. I think so, too. I prefer one person, one vote. Uh, let's see. The EC was the compromise the post-revolution Confederate States of America made in order to convince the rural states and legal slave states to sign into the Constitution. Uh, let's see. Chris Walker, I live in Tulare County, California. Hate Devin Nunes since 2002 and the, Col and the current Goldman Sachs taking neo-lib prosecutor they put against him. I am in the deepest red neo-lib haven, but I still vote. Should we just have presidential elections in New York and LA then? First of all, I'll say this. Uh, we, our, our, our whole election season should be cut more than in half. Our election season should be, I think, about a six as long as it is. And by the way, when I say stuff like this, I'm going against my own professional interest. Because even somebody at my level, which, I mean, I'm a comedian doing a live stream from his apartment. That's what I am. Uh, even somebody at my level, our election circus benefits me as a content creator. It benefits me because viewership goes up. That's just factually true. And anybody will own up to that as well. Anybody in my shoes or bigger will own up to that as well. Uh, and if they don't, they're not being honest with you. <laughs> That's just simply true. Our circus of a political system does help, from a professional standpoint, help people like me as far as our shows getting a bit of bigger audience. I would still rather have a better system in place where it's not a political circus, where it's not so void of any substance. The opening act might as well be a guy getting kicked in the balls. And we actually have a true uh, electoral system, kind of like what happens in uh, the UK, which, yes, they have their problems. I'm not here to say the UK is perfect. They're not. But their systems, I mean, their election system, I believe, is six to eight weeks or something like that. And it's not quite the circus that we have here. So to answer your question, should we just have presidential elections in New York and L.A. then? No, I don't think so. I think people would still travel around regardless. Again, it's one person, one vote. So you're trying to get the country as a whole. And if somebody chooses to just go to the big epicenters and not go to the smaller areas, they will pay for that. Even though Hillary Clinton did win the popular vote, she still paid for that. She still paid for hanging out in the main city epicenters in a place like Pennsylvania. She paid for that. So yes, traveling around still does matter. And by the way, they don't go everywhere anyway. They still don't go everywhere anyway, even though we have the Electoral College. Because we still have a, a lot of other things that give our democratic, uh, quote-unquote, system, our quote-unquote democratic system, a bit more to be desired. Mathematically, you can je get just over 22% of the popular vote and still win the presidency. Uh, CGP, I'm not sure who that's referring to, Gray, did a great video on the Electoral College with math. Okay, so how is that math better than one person, one vote? This is also math. Somebody who lives in Wyoming, their vote counts more than mine in California. This is also math. Half the country stays home on election day. 
I think a big reason for that is because they feel disenfranchised towards the majority of the place where they live in, so they don't bother voting. That's also math. So again, I mean, and I'd be curious to see that video, but I, I just don't understand. Again, I, I, I've yet to understand anything that sounds better than one person, one vote. As it is, only sociopaths seek power. I have a feeling that ain't changing anytime soon. <laughs> if we had ranked choice, one person, one vote makes most sense. Well, that's something else I favor. Uh, that's something else I am very, very in favor of. I favor ranked choice voting or some other similar alternative voting method. Uh, and I need to have, there's people more fluent on these issues as far as alternative voting methods, but I know there's other methods out there that, uh, allegedly from people that really study this stuff, like the electoral science organization, they say that they like ranked choice, like, like from a moral principle, they like ranked choice. However, they say there are other alternative voting methods out there that would be easier to implement than ranked choice. Um, there are people more fluent on those issues to talk about them than me, but um, I need to have some of those people on. I got to look pasta. Look into alternative voting. Uh, go to electoral science uh, or some other similar thing. There, there's, there's good alternative voting people out there. We got to get some of them on. <laughs> Mainstream media should be, should be banned for announcing victors before the election. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the media, what the media has done throughout the entire campaign is repulsive. And I think our media as it exists is absolutely repulsive. Um, I do think there should be protections in place prohibiting the type of media structure we have right now. I really do. Um, I think that especially as of recent, MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, they all should have to disclose who owns them before they put out anything. Anything at all. And they should be recognized for what they are. They are public relations agencies disguised as news. They're not news. They're just straight up not news. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm apologizing because I think most people here are with me. Uh, <laughs> One person, one vote is obsolete in the Democratic primary. Hillary Clinton was chosen one for the powers that be. The Electoral College threw a wrench in the cogwheel. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of getting rid of uh, superdelegates, too. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not just like, get rid of the Electoral College, everything's solved. No, I want to get rid of superdelegates. I want to get rid of gerrymandering. I want to get rid of the Electoral College. Uh, I want to have alternative voting methods. I want all that stuff. I want it all. Electoral College... No ranked choice voting, role striding, polling, location closure, and underfunding, gerrymandering, second control of debates, etc. Look up HR 3057. Not familiar with that. I got to, uh, I got to look into that. The Electoral College is the final failsafe for corrupt oligarchs, a tool of fascism to crush dissent and the will of the people. I think there are many other tools, but uh, yes, I do think the Electoral College is definitely one of them. Is it the final failsafe? Maybe. I don't know. The argument could be, could be made. Guys, I feel like we've covered it. Um, a. Mars points out, abolishing the Electoral College would mean they have to count all votes. Sounds dangerous. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know? going on we're getting our news on today yeah, yeah, yeah. you can tweet me an article at ron placone we'll go through it together and make it our own get your